Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, I got one of my customers, one of my friend's trucks in here, and he is complaining about a noise coming from his fuel tank. This is something I am experiencing in my truck as well, and he is the first customer, other than myself, to complain about such a problem. Ford has a TSB out to reprogram the PCM to take care of the noise in the tank. We already did that, but we still have the noise. Tonight, we're gonna take care of that noise and I'm gonna show you guys what to do. All right guys, thanks so much for coming back and checking me out today. I'm dropping some good knowledge for you all. Look at this fuel pump. Look at how sophisticated this thing looks. This is huge. There's so much going on here. And this is what we're gonna talk about tonight. Ford has a technical service bulletin out talking about a thump, whine, knock noise from the fuel tank area built on or before February of 21. Now I am in that criteria and it says 2021 Super Duty is equipped with a 6.7 built on or before the 10th of February of 2021 may exhibit a thump whine knock noise from the fuel tank at idle or during key on engine off. This noise may be more pronounced at fuel levels at or below a quarter tank and this may be due to the fuel pump strategy in the PCM software. To correct the condition, follow the service procedure to reprogram the PCM, which is what we already did. Now, he is still complaining that he's getting this noise after reprogramming the PCM to the latest level. And the only other thing left for it to be is the fuel pump itself. And like I was showing you guys, this is the in-tank fuel pump. It is ginormous. There's so much going on here. You see those red wires are actually going down to the fuel sender. Here's the actual fuel pump right there, that black cylindrical thing. And all the lines and returns and supplies. Definitely a lot going on. Very sophisticated piece of electronic equipment that is gonna be submerged its whole life in diesel now i have fdrs pulled up and i have the vcm connected the key is on i'm going to lift this vehicle up and i'm going to show you guys the noise that this customer is hearing the noise that i am hearing in my super duty and if you have this noise this is probably what you're going to need to get done all right i have fdrs pulled up and i am going to control the fuel pump I'm gonna monitor my low side fuel pressure and we're gonna watch it as we increase or turn on the fuel pump. You're gonna see it go right to the pressure of 80. So this is gonna simulate the vehicle being in the key on engine off state. And we're gonna to try to hear the noise. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to amplify this for you guys or not, but I'm gonna try to put my phone on the tank, see if you guys can hear this or not. Let me go on the inside of the tank, okay? I don't know, can you guys hear this? Are you guys having this happen to your fuel pump? You guys can hear the noise it almost sounds like the tank is the fuel pump is aerating the fuel well you can see what we're gonna need to do to get this fuel pump out this skid plate this whole long skid plate is gonna need to be dropped down and there are tank strap bolts that we are gonna have to loosen to drop the fuel pump. We have a big big plate that's going across that's gonna act as a strap. 
We got some electrical connectors. I'm gonna go through that procedure right now. I'm gonna get the skid plate down. I am going to show you how I remove the fuel tank strap bolts so they don't break on you, or the cage nuts, rather. And uh, we'll get this fuel pump in and out. Okay, guys, I've gotten the skid plate off. That is the first step in removing the fuel tank. And we have on this long bed, F-250, we have three straps. One, two, and three. There is a risk with removing the fuel tanks <clears throat> from these Illuma duties. And fortunately, it was one that I could get to, but I did heat it up. And the Loctite is just super tight to these J nuts or these J clips or whatever you want to call it. So I want to show you guys how to take these out um, without breaking these J clips because if they're in a spot such as this and you don't have access like this you are not gonna be able to hold the top of the cage nut from spinning and it is gonna be extremely difficult to get your fuel tank out. So what I am actually gonna be using is my mini ductor venom inductive heat probe and we're going to apply the element to the bolt and we are going to pull the trigger and it is going to heat up this bolt and the Loctite. I'm gonna to try to keep this on for about 30 seconds or so. See if you guys can start to see the smoke coming from the thread locker. It is real glue uh, that is holding this stuff together. It's very difficult to remove these bolts at times, so um, if you guys are going to be taking your fuel tank down, please, please make sure to at least get some heat in here on these bolts and do all of this before you disconnect any fuel lines. You're going to have to run into this if you are gas or diesel, so just take note of safety precautions. All right, I can see some smoke coming up right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, if it's not in focus, but I'm going to try ripping this bolt out and see how well it's going to come out. Whoops. Like butter. Like butter. You can see it's smoking. It's hot. Definitely hot. So we are going to go ahead and do this bolt over here. We're going to get it on here. Young gun. Gunning it up. This tool is about 480, 500 bucks. It is definitely paid for itself uh, when getting these types of repairs. So if we can see in this little access hole, here's the bolt we're trying to get. So you can imagine if you didn't heat it up, trying to get a wrench in here or a socket to try to hold that nut is gonna be kind of tough. So. Please adhere to these instructions when I'm telling you to heat this up because that's uh, no joke. You got to heat it up. Starting to see a little smoke. Do it maybe 10 more seconds. Just sitting on it like that. All right, I'm going to rip it out. 13 mil, you guys can see some smoke right there. So it's gonna tell me it's hot. Ah! Nice, you guys saw when I took the last bolt out, uh, all the Loctite was just flying right off. So it's only gonna be hot and allow that to happen. So I'm gonna keep the same orientation that is our front strap our last strap again we're gonna have an inside bolt and an outside bolt here is the outside bolt I am gonna do this one but I am NOT 
going to take this one out just for the risk involved with having this cage nut spin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wind up bending this whole bracket down so this face is down and I will make it bend back. It's absolutely no deal, no issue with the fuel tank strap. So before I loosen the back one, I had to go get the table so that I can support the fuel tank when removing it. All right, our last bolt for the most rear strap. I'm gonna be doing the same thing as we did on the previous bolts. Just letting the inductive heat probe do its thing. Gonna start to see smoke come from the bolt here shortly. We want this to come out butter smooth. The moment it starts grabbing is when that cage nut breaks. So we're almost about 20 seconds in right now. And I'm starting to see smoke. You guys can verify that. And I'm gonna let it go now. There it is, folks. Hot. Thing I'm gonna do is take this strap, okay, and I'm going to use this as a hinge. And I'm just gonna bend. Just like this, so that we can get the fuel tank out. And don't forget, some of these tanks for manufacturer already have like a handle so you can use this to help maneuver your tank around when when you're uh, removing it from the vehicle so I'm gonna get the tank out of the vehicle and we're gonna break it down and we're gonna remove this fuel pump all right we got the fuel tank down and these fuel tanks really aren't that bad when you compare it to the other model vehicles that I've had to do in the past the only connections we have are the fuel pump connector and the two fill hoses. The only lines that you guys are gonna have to worry about are these front lines right here on the front of the tank. So there's no reaching your hands over and taking any of these lines off. After you take these off and the tank straps, it literally comes right down. All right, so we're gonna start taking this off and we are gonna need to remember how this plate is going. Right there, you see what that says? For Moco. For Moco is the best. I'm gonna scribe the tank right there with my screwdriver. That is where the For Moco is gonna be going. We have three 10 millis. So rip these off. This is all gonna be reused. That brings us to all these cool lines. Now I've had a bunch of guys ask me, hey PTT, how do these lines come off? Can you make a video showing how all these quick disconnects come off? I'm gonna show you guys right now. These ones are just like the ones under the truck and on your fuel rail, or on your fuel filter. You're gonna need to pull that up just like you saw me do, okay? Little screwdriver, and then my mentor always told me, push the line on or your electrical connector, squeeze the button, and then pull the hose or electrical connector off. And this one was tight, but we got it off. This one, there's yellow ones just like this. I'm gonna push that button and I'm wiggling and pulling up at the same time. Here's another, that same one, yellow. Wiggle and push, Oop, there goes fuel. And we have another third one that's gonna have a button. And I'm not gonna be able to really twist this one too much. I'm gonna just try to try to work it off. I need to see if I get these guys out of my way, if that'll make a difference. I just don't like leaking fuel all over the place. Sometimes we're gonna need to disconnect these tethers right here. I'm gonna need to pop this one up like this to get this one up. 
okay. And then you guys can see I can remove this line. So we just got a little, little persuasion to do with the lines. I'm just gonna get these here out of the way, like this. Get this one. Okay. Just a mess with lines here. Nope, guess we're not gonna want to. So what actually you can do is just flip all these lines up like this on top of your fuel filter housing, not disconnecting anything. So now we need to scribe this piece, okay? Here's the locator. This is where the fuel pump, you guys can see the white locating tab of the fuel pump. That is where that's supposed to go on the tank. So what would I want to index to tell me where to put it on? Okay, I like this, I only have one of these. See this lip right here by the unlock and lock? I'm going to scribe that right there. That is where this is gonna go, right here. I don't know if you guys know the tool to remove the fuel pump, but we have, I don't know, is the part number on here? Oh, it's an OTC tool. It is uh, pretty much for all of Ford's um, fuel pumps. All the locking rings are pretty much like this, and it is tough. So I'm just gonna pop it loose, see if I can do it on the first rip. I need more swinging room. Oh, I got it. Here it is, you guys. This is it. This is the fuel pump out of a 2020 F-250. This is the same pump that is in my truck. There it is. Here's the sender. This is all full of fuel right now. I'm gonna take this over to the drain pan. There it is. That's the fuel pump. Let's get the new one. Here's the new one. Okay. Do we have anything different here? Okay, wires still look the same. What about the numbers on the top? Let's see. Let's see if we have different numbers. Okay, I got a HC34, 9 Henry 307, Dog Henry, and that's what I have on here too. The bottom numbers, I don't know what the bottom numbers are for, but the 1978 number is the same number I have on here, but I have a different uh, batch number or something. I bet that's like production time uh, plant number or something that uh, is different on this one. So I don't know if we had just an issue with like the first round of pumps maybe making noise. Uh, definitely not supposed to be making noise. I have to do mine um, because I don't want to have any high pressure fuel system issues. So I'm going to put this pump back in. I'm going to put the tank back in. You guys can all visualize how you're going to have to put this back together. You're going to have to replace the green O-ring. You're going to have to lock with this special tool, the locking ring, and re-index just like I showed you, and then put the tank in. I am then gonna hook FDRS back up, just like we did in the very beginning. I'm gonna turn the pump on, and we're gonna compare and contrast together with the difference in sounds that it makes. All right, guys, I got the fuel pump and tank back in, got the fuel pump on with our low side fuel pressure, reading 80 PSI. Now, you guys can all remember what the sound of the fuel pump was making before I did the repair. You guys can hear it now. Listen to how much quieter it is. Let me, let me put my phone back on the tank. Oh, can you guys pick that up? I sure hope you can. It is definitely different. It is not making that whining or thumping noise as mine is. Definitely changed. This is all it was. 
After performing the reprogram in that TSB stated by Ford Motor Company, I continued to have an issue which thus resulted in me replacing the fuel pump. If you guys have this issue, please let me know in the comment section below if anybody's had to replace their fuel pump in their 2020 for this particular noise or concern. This is my first, mine will be number two, and I'm sure there's gonna be a number three out there. I'm curious to know you guys. Let me know in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I'll catch you guys all next time. See you.